This is RealAgriculture.com's Seed Pod, the podcast that gives you insight into the Canadian seed industry. Brought to you by SGS BioVision. Right now we are joined by Monica Kloss from the Alberta Seed Processors. How's it going today, Monica? Great, Sean. Glad to be here. Yeah, Thank you. Good. So you enjoying yourself at the show? Absolutely. It's one of the premier events that kicks off uh, the season, as everybody knows. So I want to talk to you today about seed processing and the fact that Alberta has kind of a bit of a special sort of situation here. We don't have it in Saskatchewan or Manitoba or Ontario for sure not. Um, we have a, a bunch of co-op plants scattered across the, country, or cr- across the province basically cleaning seed, farmers are members, and, and sort of talk a bit about your organization. So we just had our 65th annual general meeting. So just over 65 years ago, um, some members from the Department of Agriculture came and said, you know what, we could grow better crops if we had better seed. So again, if you think 65 years ago, we didn't have the transportation networks that we have today, and there was a big requirement to try to up the game in seed quality. And so cooperative plants were started and there was a three-way funding back in the day. So there was a little bit of provincial money, there was some municipal money added with shareholder, farmer shareholder. Um, I'm not sure of how many co-ops were in the, the organization at the height, but we currently are running with 67 cooperatives, and so they're individually farmer-owned cooperatives that clean seed and grain. We have two locations that are actually in the BC Peace region, oh, really? but they do run under the banner of Alberta Seed Processors. So, yeah. And, and some of these facilities, uh, there was a new one that's built pretty reasonably close to me in Inchad, but some of these facilities are state of the art. Absolutely. Um, In the last probably seven years, we've seen a lot more of farmer shareholder money go back into these plants. So typically the the way that the co-ops are organized is dividends are not paid. The, The earnings just go back into sort of retained earnings with the view of upgrading and replacing plants once they get worn out. So over the last five years, there's been investments of roughly $22 million, and that doesn't include plants that have been rebuilt. So you mentioned the plant in Enchant, so that's a brand new one that they built just uh, adjacent to their old plant, which they are in the process of decommissioning and taking down. We have a brand new plant in Lougheed, um, or Lougheed, I'm not really La- sure. I, say, I would say Lougheed. Lougheed, we'll okay. And uh, so, you know, they've uh, built a state-of-the-art facility with machinery that's really easy to be cleaned and changed over, as well as brand new seed treatment equipment. Right. Um, one of the, the newer plants as well is located near Strathmore, Alberta. So Strathmore was a uh, sort of a unique um, situation where the plant was located within the town limits. And then that town grew up around the plant. So they had school children walking (laughs) by the plant and trucks going through Uh, town. It makes field trips easy for the school. I guess, I guess. And um, so they've rebuilt outside of town and they're actually within um, the intermodal shipping hub. Okay. So their business has really expanded to filling sea cans for business partners or whatever, in addition to cleaning seeds. Yeah, so it sounds so. like the, a lot of the, the, the members, the individual facilities have really matured and it's not just about seed cleaning more, anymore, but it's about services. It's treating seed, it's packaging seed, it's you know, intermodal shipping, it's a whole bunch of different things like that. that it, so it's really those services that are a nice adjunct to the core cleaning business. Certainly, certainly. Um, most of the co-ops keep that seed cleaning, grain processing, sort of at their core, but they look at spin-off benefits to their membership as well. And, you know, just for example, we have a couple older plants that are part of um, rail co-ops right. and are acting as shipping sort of depots to weigh trucks and stuff to help producer car loading and different things like that as well. So, so. has the, the increase in mobile cleaners, has that 
uh, has that provided competition to the membership or are those mobile cleaners also a member of your group? Um, currently, the way our organization is formalized is you have to be a cooperative that is involved in agriculture. So really, um, if somebody had a cooperative in any type of agriculture business, they could make an application to become our membership. And at one point in time, we had a grain terminal that was farmer-owned, co-op, be our member. Um, they have since left because they looked at what we were doing and what they were doing and, and it was no longer a good fit for okay. them. Um, but uh, mobiles, if they were cooperatives, they could be a membership, but if they're privately private held, yeah. we've had conversations about changing our bylaw, but it's just, we're just not there yeah. yet. So, so what's, what's the biggest challenge right now for your, for your group and your membership? I think the biggest challenge is trying to give people the confidence to look and seize opportunities really because I look at opportunities in the processing industry here at home and even though there are some negative things that have happened globally you know right now the uncertainty with NAFTA is just one example of one of those sort of negative things that is out there we look at it and say hey let's make some hay out of this because you know what, maybe we should be doing some value-added processing here in Alberta, and our plants are situated geographically as well as, like you say, technology-wise, yeah. to answer some of those opportunities. So the big thing is, you know what, we can do this. We, have the, we just need the confidence to step into that arena and put our hands up and say, pick me. So yeah. I think that that's our biggest challenge. Well, we interviewed uh, the Alberta's agriculture minister yesterday, O'Neill Carlier, and he talked about can or Alberta needing to be more in the area of value-added processing. So that seems like it would fit very nicely with your organization's yeah. mission. Yeah. Yeah. So, so where, for those that don't know, where does your organization fit in the seed value chain? So seed value chain is uh, a changing landscape. So nationally, there's some things happening and so I came into the organization rough years ago and prior to that they were just really happy in being only a provincial based seed processing organization and that was their focus. We did a retool of the strategic plan months into when I started and the directors that were on the board at that time said, wait a minute, we need to be playing a role nationally and possibly even internationally. We need to step up to the plate because there's opportunity and we won't be serving our membership properly if, if we don't go there. Right, yeah. And so it is evolving. Um, our seed value, so we started out as being sort of the farm save seed processors. So if you had seed, a farmer could bring it in, we'd process it, the farmer would take it home. We've now really morphed into cleaning a lot of pedigreed seed. Um, I think last year our numbers are somewhere around 42 million bushels of processing mm -hmm. overall. And out of that 42 million, roughly eight or nine were pedigreed bushels. Okay. And then when you start to slice that data more down, you know, there's about 21 million bushels that were seed. And so close to half of what we do is non-seed sort of grain cleaning right. and exporting. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, well, congratulations on all the success of the organization and uh, best of luck in the future. Oh, thank you.